During the Gilded Age, American cities developed and progressed through the innovations made by the captains of industry like Andrew Carnegie, John D. Rockefeller, and Cornelius Vanderbilt. The United States seemed to be steaming its way to becoming a first world nation. There was, however, a problem. Large companies created by the robber barons were able to buy up and easily outcompete smaller companies, and especially American small businesses. Through buying up these smaller companies, not only did the respected companies become larger, but they gained unparalleled power in their respected markets. The companies became giants, behemoths, they became monopolies. As a monopoly, the companies could be able to rise their prices extraordinarily high, much higher than the prices would normally be in a fair market or drop them ridiculously low in order to eliminate other competitors for interfering with their market. Companies such as Standard Oil and Northern Securities would charge people more and drain their savings unfairly because there would be no competition to stop them. Fortunately, in 1890, a law put in place in order to prevent these unfair monopolies, or trusts as they are sometimes called, and secure a competitive marketplace. The Sherman Antitrust Act was, however, not well enforced. Nearly 15 years later, Theodore Roosevelt, a war hero who led the warships to the Philippines and won the Battle of San Juan Hill, would use the Sherman Antitrust Act as his primary weapon to battle unfair monopolies. He was able to do this because the previous president, William McKinley, who had chosen not to target monopolies, had luckily been killed. Roosevelt had become the new president, and his first victim happened to be Northern Securities. Northern Securities, won by J.P. Morgan and James Jerome Hill, had become a threat to both travel and transportation in the U.S., and Roosevelt in 1904 was quick to attack. The court ruled that Northern Securities indeed was an unfair monopoly, and it was dissolved in several smaller companies. Roosevelt would continue attacking Spree and Taft, the new president, continued the trend in the most notable case of trust busting, when in 1911, the case of Standard Oil of New Jersey versus the United States occurred. John D. Rockefeller's company was said to be in violation of the Sherman Antitrust Act and was split into 34 different companies. Trust busting had also hurt the American tobacco industry and would later be used against much more modern companies such as AT&T and Microsoft. Although companies like Standard Oil and Northern Securities were broken up, then they have now since merged back together to form new powerhouses like BNSF and ExxonMobil. Nonetheless, the trust busting done in the progressive era was instrumental and America would not be the same without it.